if you reduce this equation, you end up with Q0 equal to U TA minus TB. So once again, this is the same form as Newton's law of cooling. Q equal to one coefficient multiplied by driving force of temperature. But in this equation here, the driving force starts from the very left-hand side and very right-hand side. You don't need to know temperature in between. So as long as you use overall heat transfer coefficient, you can just measure temperature in and out. And then you can use it right away. This is very convenient and very practical because in general, in, in practical terms, there is very, it is very hard to measure temperature right in between at the interface. Somehow you, you need to drill some holes, put the thermocouple in there. That's, that's impractical at all. So it would be easier as long as you can describe heat flux by just knowing temperature inside and outside. That can be done using overall heat transfer coefficient. And once again, overall heat transfer coefficient can be derived using empirical equation. Okay? Sometimes you may see this equation Q equal to UA delta T. It's just the same, but small Q is, is a heat flux. It's a capital Q divided by area perpendicular to it. Delta T here will be driving force. All right? Any question? All right, since we have only about 45 minutes left, I'm going to skip examples to example in chapter 10.9, all right? In this example, you have slit, two walls. You may, be, you may say that this is wall. This wall on the left has temperature T2. The wall on the right has lower temperature T1. In between the wall, you have fluid, okay? And the fluid itself that is in contact with the left wall should have higher temperature than fluid on the right-hand side, right? Now, if you think that there is no external force to force this fluid to flow. In this case, it is not a forced flow. Fluid is supposed to be still. Okay? If the fluid stands still, the heat transfer from high temperature side to low temperature sides is basically conduction. And it is one dimensional conduction. So therefore, temperature profile supposed to be linear, okay? 
So there will be a linear temperature profile like this. But if you look into detail, the fluid around here is supposed to have higher temperature than fluid around there. And density is function of temperature. That means high temperature fluid supposed to have lower density. Lower density means it should rise up. The high density fluid should go down, sink down. Okay? So if the wall is very tall, up here you will have fluid movement down here. The fluid moves down and then down here it rotates again. There will be circulation of fluid. But we will just consider the, the system here, neglect all the end effects. Okay? So if, if you trying to imagine velocity profile, the velocity profile at this point, velocity of fluid at the wall is supposed to be zero. Around this region, fluid is supposed to move upward. Around this region, fluids move downward, right? So velocity profile is supposed to look something like this. Okay? This problem, or uh, the flow here, is caused by the difference in density. It's called natural convection. So even as at the starting point, fluid stay still, it's stationary, but at the end, it will be a movement. Movement here is not caused by work. It's not caused by external force. So it's natural convection. It's called natural convection. All right? Now, if you look in detail, at first, we assume temperature profile to be linear because we think that it has no convection. It is conduction only. But after the fluid moves, it will be no longer linear, right? There'll be convection as well. If I'm interested in finding both temperature profile and velocity profile, what should I do? And please do not say give up. If you want to do it correctly, absolutely correctly, you need to set up shear balance for temperature profile and shear balance for um, velocity profile determination. You get two equations, solve them simultaneously. But as you know, we cannot do that according to our limitation in mathematical, in mathematics. Okay, so we should start doing either heat balance or momentum balance. Which one should be done first? In our last example, we face same scenario. You have velocity and you have uh, temperature change. Okay, in last example, we set up equation for momentum balance first under assumption that density and viscosity does not change with respect to temperature. And then take velocity profile back into equation of energy or energy balance so that we can solve for temperature profile. But here, if you take I mean, there is no way that you can find the velocity profile under assumption that density and viscosity is constant, right? Because right now, the fluid movement is solely due to the difference in density. And difference in density is function of temperature. So if you consider this problem, I mean, you need to start by finding temperature profile first. 
Okay? The problem is, can we do that? What kind of assumption should we make so that we can derive temperature profile first? Do you understand? Again, once again, okay, once more. In this problem, if you look in detail, temperature profile is affected by velocity profile. At the same time, velocity profile is also affected by temperature profile. Okay? If you look into detail, you cannot find velocity profile without knowing temperature profile. Also, you may not find temperature profile without knowing velocity profile. But it's, it's becoming a loop. You, you need to start somewhere. So, the question would be, should we start by starting to finding temperature profile first? Neglect the, the effect of velocity profile toward this temperature profile. Get the temperature profile and then find the velocity profile later. Or should we start deriving velocity profile first and then bring that velocity profile to find temperature profile later? Which one should we do first? Okay? If you look into problem like this, first of all, velocity profile or the movement of fluid is caused by difference in density. And density difference is caused by temperature difference. So without knowing temperature difference, we cannot derive velocity profile. On the other hand, if we assume that our movement, the movement of the fluid here, is not so fast, maybe we can neglect convection term in z direction. And then under assumption that convection term in z direction can be neglected, we can assume that right now energy transfer is almost 100% conduction and keep the temperature profile as linear like this. Okay? So this would be our procedure. Now, so we are to start with energy balance first and then bring information from energy balance to solve for momentum balance. For energy balance, do we have conduction? In which direction? In y direction, right? Do we have conduction in z direction? Yes or no? If you assume that temperature along the wall here is uniform, then in temperature along the vertical direction in the fluid is supposed to be uniform as well. In that case, there will be no temperature difference in z direction. If there is no temperature difference in z direction, there will be no conduction in z direction. Okay? So we will have conduction in y direction. 